So I was in, some of you have heard this story, some of you haven't, but it's relevant because of what happened to me in D.C. I was uh, teaching up in Washington State in 90 or 91, I believe it was 91. So it'd be 30 years ago. Had the first, what I would call vision, that, that was uh, more than just a you know, passing mental picture. I mean, the, this was a, an open vision where while I was up speaking, suddenly, Pamela would know, remember this. George and Pam were, were there. They were leading um, the ministry that, that uh, brought me a master's commission. But um, I was teaching, and this vision was given to me. I had my eyes wide open, but I wasn't seeing. It was like your screen. I wasn't seeing the people in the room anymore. I was seeing something else. And having never had any teaching about that or experienced it, it was very uh, sh distracting, shocking, almost scary. You know, it was like, what's going on with me? Is that my hallucinating up here? What's going on? And what I saw was a stadium full of kids, young people, you know, teens, 20s, maybe even 30s, just the younger ge generation. A stadium filled with people, with them, radically passionate for the Lord. Screaming, jumping, intense worship, and then intercession was intense. And then the scene changed and they were in the parking lot leaving and then they were translated to back to their uh, cities and everywhere they went when they arrived fires of revival broke out and the Lord spoke to me about the coming the revival that's coming and he spoke to me about the role that the younger generation will, will play in it. That he was going to visit them and they would have a very significant uh, role in this, in the fire that's coming. But it wasn't just for them, but I knew that he was going to rescue an entire generation. Amen. That was the point. They're not going to be left out. No matter what you see, no matter how it looks, he's coming to this gen the young generation. And so this church and churches related to them were, were taking a, a group to Washington, D.C. a month later, and they invited me to go with them. So I, C.C. and I went. This was my, I may, this may have been my first visit to D.C., I'm not sure. But when I arrived at the hotel, uh, George met me at the door of the hotel, Wonderlich, and said, there's this really interesting thing they do here. It's called a Bible-thon. And there's a tent set up down at the Capitol. A little canopy thing, not a full tent. Just, you know, big enough to, like you might put up on the beach or something, you know, just keep people dry if it rained. A little PA system, a little podium, it's very small, permit to read the scriptures to the Capitol 24-7 all week. The idea being we are decreeing the word of God over the nation and over our government. So people signed up for 15-minute segments and they started in Genesis, went through Revelation. You didn't get to read whatever you wanted to read. You had to read, start from where the last person stopped and keep reading. And then when your 15 minutes were up, somebody kept going from there. So he said, there are, only, there are very few slots left because there were a lot of Christians there for the National Day of Prayer Week. So he said, very few slots left, but I knew you'd want to do it, so I signed you up. And I said, good, thanks. He said, but all that was left was the middle of the night, 2 a.m. <laughs> But I thought, I thought you'd want to do it. And I said, you're right. 
So when he told me that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, I'm going to confirm to you through the passage you read that that was not an hallucination. It's me. It was me. You didn't conjure it up and that I'm going to send this revival and it is going to impact. I'm going to save a, gen a generation through Amen. it. Amen. I'm going to confirm it to you through the verse, verses you read. And I told the Lord, this is all in my mind, in my head, not out loud. So I didn't want anybody to know. So I told the Lord, I can get revival out of any place in the Bible if I read 15 minutes. <laughs> I mean, if God's judging the wicked if he's just making a promise or saying that it says he's good, I can get revival out of the big ads. I can take it and spin it and get it over to, okay, revival, okay, I can do that. I said, Lord, I know I can do that. Even if it's just you're strong and you're mighty, I can get revival out of that in my mind. So I'm not trying to box you in and tell you what you have to do. This is not about you having to do something. This is about me not trusting myself. Uh, yeah. That's, a good, yeah. That's good. Uh, yeah. Because I know what I would do with any passage. Somehow I would get that. Yes. So the only way, because of what you've been saying to me, the only way that I would know that it's a confirmation of, of what you just said is if I get to read either the book of Haggai or the book of Habakkuk. Hmm. And I just left it with that. So the next, um, next uh, night, next day, and then that night when I went, 30 minutes early as uh, requested, they were nowhere near Haggai or Habakkuk. And I told the Lord it was okay. I didn't want him to feel bad. You know. I said, it's all right. I know. I said, I said, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, you didn't sign me up for this slot. So, you know, you, you, I, I get it. It's all right. And by the way, the guy that walked up to me in D.C. was a part of this trip. He was one of the leaders in that group of churches. And while he was talking to me, I'd forgotten all about this. And 30 years later, I'm standing on the courts of the Supreme Court. And he walks up to me and I have this flashback of this experience I'm talking to you about right now. So I told him, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I wasn't even disappointed. I thought, well... I, my faith is not in this that, that if, I, if I missed it that's okay you know but I, my faith is in him so two minutes before my time slot she walked the lady in charge walked up to me and Mr. Sheets you know yeah you're up in a couple minutes and, uh, yeah and since she she just got right in my face and the poor lady she it looked like she just went into a day a trance or something I, th I know she had no idea what she was doing or saying. <laughs> she just got this blank look on her face. And she just looked deep in my eyes and said, you have your choice. You can either read the book of Haggai or the book of Habakkuk. <laughs> And I said, excuse me? They didn't let anybody else do it. They had to read from wherever they were. I said, excuse me? She said, you have your choice. Said, you can either read the book of Haggai or the book of Habakkuk. And then it's like, it's like what did I just do? And she just walked away. You know? And I thought many times, that's how serious 
he is and he was and he is about this. Yeah. Amen. Say, I'm going to show you yeah. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And I can do this. Amen. Amen. And there have been a few times when I've had to lean back on that. There have been some years since then in this nation that have been very difficult to swallow. And I've had to lean back on that word and say, I don't care what it looks like. Amen. You are coming to this nation yes, with yes. a great sweeping revival. Yes, amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And it may be delayed here and there by the actions of people, but it will not be stopped. Amen. 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 So isn't it? This guy said, he said, I, I wasn't planning on coming this week, but I woke up Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, I think it was Wednesday morning. I heard the Lord say, go to D.C. He said, I haven't been in a while. He said, it's four in the morning. I started calling, trying to get tickets. And I don't know what he would say. I believe he was sent to Washington, D.C. to walk up to me on the Supreme Court steps and say, hey, remember me? And this flashback comes to me you have your choice you can read Haggai or Habakkuk 